Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. Huge game for the Wolverines on Thursday at 15 win Northwestern, Groundhog Day. The Maize and Blue came into this one having won six straight in the series. And much like that classic Bill Murray movie, they woke up and experienced the exact same thing for a seventh consecutive time. Michigan facing a Northwestern team playing its fifth game in 11 days due to a pair of makeup games from COVID issues a couple of weeks ago. The Wolverines had only a pair of buckets at the first media timeout, both from deep. Jet Howard delivers a left wing bomb. Then Kobe Bufkin from deep in the corner. Hunter Dickinson missed his first three shots, but came back with back to back buckets, punctuated with a rim rattler. Dickinson fakes a pass, he'll drive and trail with the left hand. Along that left baseline, fake the pass, thundered it down. Boo Booey carried the Wildcats on a night when the Michigan D really showed up. He scored a game high 23, hitting all three of their three pointers. On the road, it's all hands on deck. Joey Baker off the bench with the wing three. The start of a big night for the Carolina native. The biggest lead of the half was only five. Doug McDaniel goes down the lane and feathers in a floater. The Wolverines up 26-25 at the bathroom break. Second half, a rough start. Michigan turns it over and the Cats are on the run. Chase Audige to Ty Berry, but it didn't shake the maize and blue. When we say Doug McDaniel has speed, this is what we're talking about. Finds McDaniel who will mm -hmm. drive behind the back dribble, leave it for Bufkin, laid it up and in, low on the right. Oh, what a great find from Doug. Next trip, Baker with a high arching shot and he's fouled on the play. A four point trip, part of a 12-0 Michigan run. Great ball movement here by the Wolverines. Kobe to Hunter for the slam, Dickinson led him with 19. Michigan also performed well on the glass. Terrence Williams the second working hard. The run topped out at 22 to four as the lead balloon to 13. Baker continued to connect. He made five of six shots, three from the long line, tying his Michigan career high with 14. Then Kobe takes a moment all to himself. Poked away by Bufkin, one on one for Kobe. Goes up for the left hand rim rock. Oh yeah, Kobe. Bufkin registered his first career double-double. The Wolverines led by as many as 19, rolling to a 68-51 win, a nice ricochet after suffering back-to-back -back losses. And that's collectively, as a group, we have to play. One guy goes down, all right, when one guy's not, the shot's not falling, one guy's not, you know, doing what we're asking, okay, um, next man up, type of mentality, that's what you did. Like, guys stepped up and helped out. All right, guys stepped up and gave energy off the bench. All right, and that's that's the part of it. And that's a part of a team, and that's a part of what a winning team looks like. All right, so we're gonna go home. All right, we're gonna watch the film. We're gonna regroup. All right, one game at a time. Mm -hmm. That's how it's our mentality is. One game at a time. Okay. This was our NCAA tournament right here. All right, start off with Northwestern. We got one what quad win. On the road, okay, let's keep grinding to get another one, one at a time. <laughs> this was huge, man. We knew coming in, uh, you know, we had our backs against the wall. Uh, we got to make a run if we're going to make this tournament. And so for us, we knew um, we just wanted to come out here and be dominant. Like you said, come out here, come out strong. We knew they played two days ago, and so we tried to wear on them. You know, that was a big emphasis for us, just trying to wear on them. Uh, we saw that they were subbing early and often, so we knew they were still a little tired from the last game. So we just tried to go out there and just run, on, especially in transition, get out there and run, use transition and stuff like that, and just try to wear them down. And I think we did that today. We had our backs against the wall. We knew we needed to come out here and get a win, and so that was just our mind said we were going to do whatever it took to win and and so we made that happen we made plays throughout the game and uh and we didn't look back you know we we, we handled what we needed we did what we needed to do what we talked about the, the days leading up to it so it was a good effort buffkin was two assists shy of a triple double 15 points 12 rebounds and eight helpers doing a little bit of everything and that's what we need out of kobe he's obviously a really good player for us um i think he's just really coming into his own um, he's really been a facilitator, embracing that role. Uh, he knows that he's going to be able to get his, but going out there, especially when Doug is out and he's at the one, he's being a facilitator and leading the team. He's doing a really good job of that. Baker gave us one of the best moments of the night when he was fouled on a three-pointer in that big second half rally. T. Will made a great pass out and uh, just uh, knocked down a shot. You know, it was uh, just a good, good, good player all around. 
Still to come, a trip to Happy Valley. And later, hear from the woman the players call Miss Janine. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Our conversation with head coach Jawan Howard is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Here's Brian Bush. Coach, 21 assists on 24 made field goals in this one. Doug had nine, Kobe had eight. It seemed like a total team effort from a distribution standpoint. How was this team so successful in that area? Well, patience. You know, they've been uh, doing a really good job in practice, uh, preparing for this matchup, but also understanding, like, watching film and seeing where we can prepare to, to make opportunities uh, where we're not forced, where we can, of course, you know, get some possessions where we can score. Um, it was great to you know, see that you know, guys were able to get the ball in sweet spots uh, and then also take advantage of what the defense gave us. You know, last game, you know, we, we talked about it as a team that you know, 18 turnovers, uh, we wanted to make sure that we didn't give up 18 turnovers tonight. So that's what that last two practices was all about. And so I just love how our guys are so dialed in applying it today. Kobe Bufkin, two assists shy of a triple-double, a career-high 12 rebounds. Just how well did he play today? It was huge. Man, he did uh, a really good job of attacking the basket. Uh, he also uh, played with a nice pace to his, which he's always have uh, throughout the year. Um, most important you know, thing I felt that was so valuable for us was his rebounding. Uh, you know, being active on the glass, coming up with some of those, you know, those muscle you know, areas, you know, whether it was offensive rebound or defensive rebound, and he was just all over the floor. Talk to me about Joey Baker, that huge and one on the three-pointer. Yes. He had a great second half stretch in particular. What kind of lift did he provide this club? Well, I mean, he had one three that rolled out. Uh, he had one three that almost tried to roll out and went in. Uh, you know, like I told Joe when he in the second half, like those shots are going to fall. And uh, he was big. You know, he gave us a big lift. You know, when Jet what, didn't have it going, you know, he Joey came in and uh, the one three and one way bounced up and then went in. Uh, that was a big play for us. Also attacking the basket. Uh, you know, he showed, you know, he's not only just a shooter, but he's a basketball player. Uh, we're going to need that again on Sunday. <laughs> Lastly, you got a chance to celebrate this one with your team. You're in your hometown or, or close to your home base. What does this mean for this team to go on the road, not just to win, but to win the way you guys did? It's huge. Uh, you know, we've had some games on the road where we've been just right there and uh, just couldn't get over that hump. Uh, to win a game like this versus a very good Northwestern team, you know, one of the best teams, and not only just in our league, but also in college basketball, you know, this is big for us. But we just got to keep plugging away one game at a time. Coach, thank you. Thank you. After the break, meet another Howard with great passion for the program. And later, we step away from hoops to talk about a big improvement at the big house. Sunday, the Wolverines were in Happy Valley looking for a season sweep of Penn State. Jet Howard returned from injury after a one-game absence and got cozy right away with the goals at the Bryce Jordan Center. Right baseline, it's Jet Howard spinning on Funk. He'll fade right elbow. Tough luck it goes. Nothing but nylon for Jet Howard, who's got an early 10. He scored 13 of the Wolverines' first 15 points. Jet made 8 of 13 from the floor, including 5 from beyond the arc. The freshman finished with a team high 21. Hunter Dickinson scored 17 in the first meeting, but was held to six in the rematch. The big guy in the middle didn't attempt a single free throw. With four and a half to go in the first half, it was a one point game, but the Nittany Lions went on an 18 to two run to build a 17 point halftime bulge. Here's Funk, 28 footer. Mm. Yep. Nittany Lions are 9 of 17 from downtown. They might shoot from half court on the next trip down. They rode the three-headed monster of Jalen Pickett, Seth Lundy, and Andrew Funk. The trio combined for 66 points, 10 of Penn State's 13 three-pointers, and 24 of their 31 field goals overall. When the dust settled, PSU earned a season split with an 83-61 win, dropping the Wolverines to 11 and 10 overall, 5-5 five five in the Big Ten. 
Welcome back to the show. Most of you are well aware of the rarity that is Michigan basketball. Jawan Howard coaching not one, but two of his sons, Jace and Jet. Well, you're about to meet another member of the Howard family who, though not as front and center, has equal amounts of passion for the program. Let's roll it back to May of 2019. The Michigan job opens, and Janine Howard says she saw a sparkle in her husband's eyes. Michigan came up, and then he's like, I saw the wheels started to turn in his, in his mind. And I'm like, wow, we're moving to Michigan. I already knew it. I knew, I knew it when he said it. He was like, the Michigan job came up, and I'm like, I'm considering it, and I'm like, mm-hmm, you're gonna take that job. <laughs> Though rooted with life in Miami at the time as an assistant coach with the Heat, Janine says this gave Jawan an opportunity to serve as a mentor. I really wanted him to feel like he was living in, in his purpose. What are you like on game day? I, I'm sick. I'm sick, I'm sick. I, I, sometimes I can't sleep the night before. Um, I can't eat uh, hours before. Um, sometimes I get a migraine. <laughs> To say Janine is engaged during games is an understatement of immense proportions. I'm the sixth man and I feel like if I don't scream loud enough or if I don't cheer or scream when their other team is taking a, 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 a foul shot, a free throw shot, that it's my fault if I, you know, if they, if they make it. So you become, all, you buy into all these superstitions that I've never had before. I want them to feel like I'm there for them too. Sometimes their parents are not there and I'm, I wanna scream as loud, as loud for them as I do for my own. Being the spouse of a head coach guarantees two things. One, dealing with wins and losses. I try to listen and see where I can fit in because sometimes he just, he gets really quiet after a loss. He um, does a lot of reflecting. I try to keep things as normal as possible around, the, you know, and there's a role for him in our household too, and it doesn't just go away because you lost a game. So I've always been a shoulder um, to lean on in our rough times, whether it's basketball or anything else. And two, outside noise. How do you handle criticism of your husband and at times your children? Not well, I'm working on that. I'm pretty active on certain social media platforms and I've literally had to ignore them. Um, it's hurtful, particularly about the kids, not just Jason Jet, but when they speak um, ill of any of those boys, I just wanna, I, I'm, I'm the, a mama bear. Whatever you do though, don't call her the first lady of Michigan basketball. She laughed and politely told me, I don't like that title. The guys, the team, the, the team, the they call me Hey Miss Janine. <laughs> and I like that. They're like, hey Miss Janine. It shows respect, but it also, you know, gives us sort of familiarity with them too. I don't I don't and Mrs. Howard seems very formal. Having both of her sons on the team, Janine said was something that was never planned. So it's a dream to have, you know, I, I can get out and um, one-stop shop. I got my husband and I got both boys and I don't have to be, like even when they played AAU basketball, we would have to divide and conquer. And sometimes Joanne was so busy working that it was only me and my parents would step in and my sister would step in. And we ran out our interview shot clock by talking about what she treasures most about this life experience. I'm holding on to and I'm savoring each and every moment, you know. I hope we can be here for a very long time. Jawan does too. I just want to, you know, add value and to where, where, however I can, wherever I can. And so, yeah, family, family, family. Go blue. <laughs> We told you she was passionate. Janine is also passionate about her multiple charitable endeavors, something she says she deeply cherishes about her role with the program. Still to come, Michigan is upgrading the fan experience at the Big House. See the early results of the project when Inside Michigan basketball rolls on. 
A Sunday matinee in the Twin Cities kickstarted the week for the Michigan women. Fifth year, Leah Brown reached a career milestone. The Auburn, Indiana native scored her 1,000th point as a Wolverine in only her third season with the program. She finished with 20 on the afternoon, helping the Mays and Blue to an 11 point lead at the half. Then they blew the roof off with a 27-7 third quarter barrage, keyed by a 17-0 stretch. Layla Felia dropped in a game high 22, raising her season average to a team best 17 per outing. 13 Wolverines saw the floor, including Heartland, Michigan native Whitney Solemn, who scored her first bucket of the season. The Wolverines led by as many as 36, cruising to a 77-41 triumph. Thursday, the women were back at home to take on Illinois, one of the most improved clubs, not only in the Big Ten, but in the entire country. And they had to do it without star guard Layla Filia, one of their most dependable scorers. Hope you grabbed your popcorn early because there would be no drama at the end. The Wolverines leading from start to finish. In the middle of the second, Michigan blew it open with a 15 to nothing stretch. Three Wolverines hit double figures. Maddie Nolan and Emily Kaiser with 10 apiece. And Leah Brown continued her hot hand. She scored a game high 27 on 10 of 13 shooting. Brown is averaging 23 and a half points per game over her previous four outings. The Maize and Blue led 41-22 at the break. They shot 50% as a team, expanding the lead to as many as 23 and cruising to their 18th win of the year, 74-57. When Layla went down, you know, you lose arguably one of your best players, your best defender, uh, a player that's been scoring over 20 points a game, a high energy player, like how are we gonna respond? You know, that for me as a coach, that was the first question is how is our team going to respond? And it was incredible tonight. We all played really hard and everyone that came in the game was super important. And um, like, it wasn't just me starting, like Elise and Ari had great minutes and yeah, everyone stepped up. Obviously coming off the bench is like a very difficult position to be in, no matter like who you are, but I think just the mindset that our bench has is kind of unlike anybody else. Um, the amount of work that people put in is really impressive. And so to see that come to light, um, kind of surface for people and be able to contribute in um, important ways like they were able to tonight was just really special. There's a program here and we, you know, we are there for each other and the next person is gonna be ready when their number is called. And it, it, you know, Jordan got that starting spot, but it was more than Jordan. Our entire team, you know, really stepped up to the challenge and we didn't miss a beat and that was just, it was awesome to watch. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Shifting up a bit, we wrap up with a major project taking shape at the big house. You may recall last fall, the university revealed renderings for new, larger scoreboards at Michigan Stadium. The project started the Monday after the final home game of the regular season. In order to implement the new boards, new columns have to be installed. They were made in and transported from Pennsylvania 550 miles away and arrived in Ann Arbor this week. Each of the scoreboards at each end has uh, a new support structures, and those support structures go down 80 feet into the ground and are about 12 foot wide holes, or caissons as we call them. And uh, you know, so you don't want to fall in those. But those have been those have been put in on the north end, and we'll get the one on the south end. And uh, excited to get this project going. From a square footage perspective, uh, the board will more or less be double in size from the old one. Right? It's going to be the same height, but it's about 70 feet wider uh, than the old one. So quite a bit more square footage of video display that we'll have that we didn't in the past, which will help enhance the game experience. Be able, we'll be able to put up different uh, kinds of stats and, and all those type of things. And uh, we're excited to see that. A new sound system will also be installed at the big house. Money for the near $40 million project came entirely from private funds earmarked for capital improvements. As for the basketball team, a busy week all at home. Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday against Ohio State, Nebraska, and Indiana. So we'll have plenty to talk about next week right here on Inside Michigan Basketball. We'll see you then.